It's interesting to be here among you. I told you my name is Judy Panka Abadi, Machte Panka, Oklahoma. I'm a Panka woman. I'm from Oklahoma. I told you I've been looking forward to this moment and that it's good to be here among you. My sons are here. Where are you? Okay. I got to ground myself a little bit here. So my relative, Tom Goldtooth, called me this morning. He said, Sister, uh, I know it's late notice, but I'm putting you on a panel this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's with our relative, Ninawa, from the Southern Hemisphere. He and his companion and I have a history together that has been one of uh, sharing our shared vision that the Creator has given us of understanding how together we're in this crisis of time of humanity to be listening and speaking on behalf of our Mother the Earth, our Father the Sky, to be listening and speaking on behalf of this sacred water who I just asked to bear witness to these words. In our ways, in the ways of the Panka, which means sacred head, there was a time when we never traveled to another country, another people's area, unless we had witnesses. Like today, my sons are here. Their friends are here from other nations. And at times like that, those witnesses would bear their truths when they went home to say that we spoke honorably, that we said the things that were needed to be said and no more and no less. I asked the water to do that for us today because the water herself, itself, has a memory and a life, has a way of being that flows, that fills the crevices, that falls from the sky that lives within your body and mine, that is a portion of Mother Earth that she freely gives from her breast so that humankind, so that forelegs, so that wings, so that those things with roots can also live. And as part of a sacred cycle that we began to inhabit at a time that our spirits were looking for form at a time when our generations before us begin to pray that we might come into a natural cycle of being and be part of all that is. And in doing so, our mothers, our fathers, sought a way to care for us. And at some point through the love that they had for us, and at some point through the love of creation, a little spark began. That was the beginning of the bodies that are these robes that we wear over our spirits. These bodies, these robes, that are made from the essence of the earth herself and the breath of the Father sky. And so as the mother began to create us in our first environment, that of the sacred water, that has the same essence as the oceans of the earth. And we began with a single cell, a perfect single cell, 
that cell began to divide as our mothers were given the foods that maybe their hunter husbands provided, whether they had them in a supermarket these days or out in the wilds. Whether their sacred food became part of the vegetable nation, those that have roots in the ground, or those with four legs, or those with wings. However that was, they'd been blessed by the rain, by the streams that had run. None of this is new. The air is not new. This air has been recycled and turned in part of a sacred form of life. This water has been everywhere and is part of a sacred form of life itself. The same with the trees, the vegetables, the animals, the very rocks, and all those things that make these robes that we wear over our spirits, our unique individual spirits. But we are one with all that is, all my relations, whatever language you want to say that says all my relations, which is the biggest prayer that you can make. Because as these cells divided, as our mothers ingested these foods, we became one with each of those things that nourished her, that came from our one true mother that we all share. And as we came from our mother's womb into this sacred world, we went... <gasps> And the Father Sky gave us breath. And this sacred sun gave us warmth. And the Moon Mother began to govern our rhythms just as they had the rhythms of our mothers as she came into her gestation time and moved that rhythm through her body until we came. So when Tom asked me, to participate in this moment with you, with each one of you. It was so easy to say yes, because this way is a simple and clear way to understand our relationship with all that is, with the sacred breath that we have, and why it is so confusing to us as indigenous people who see things in a very clear way often. To try to understand when we come to places like this, where Governor Brown is having this weird idea that he can buy and sell the air. Anybody? <laughs> How much you got? <laughs> I hear the rent's pretty high here. I'm just going to hold this for you. No problem. It's not going to go anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's that crazy thing they call money that's just as imaginary as that. I've got a plastic card. It's so strange because people think there's something to do with that, you know. I could just stick it in a machine and it, people give me things, you know. Well, that's how silly this all is. This how silly it is for us to allow the politicians to believe that they have the right to call it carbon trading, that they have the rights to call a REDS program, that they have a right to say how our one true mother nourishes and cares for her friends, her children that walk on two lakes for our brothers and sisters that run on four, for my family that flies in the air, for the creepy crawlers, for those ways that burrow under the earth, for the sacred water that sustains all life, my sons back here, as well as my other sons, my granddaughters, my grandsons, my nieces and my nephews, spent months at Standing Rock 
because the Ponca lived along Nishude, the Missouri River. And she was sacred to us. And when these pipelines continue to wind their ugly ways through your lives and mine without any conscience, then we do stand up as water protectors. Then we do stand up as sky protectors. And we and you have this sacred honor and duty to continue to understand that if we live in a manner as our ancestors did, that prayed for us to be able to be here, to have the sacred honor to eat, to drink, and we're so blessed we can turn on a faucet and that water's there. But that water needs our prayers now because the water is being defiled. Because the sacred oil and gas that are part of the natural system of life has been enslaved and that needs our prayers as well. Because those workers who are putting food on the table for their family believe that they have to have a job and these corporations choose to enslave them as well instead of making a just transition into renewable energy. It's a crime. It's not a crime against humanity because we can no longer separate ourselves from nature. Within my tribe, we passed a statute recently and we're the first nation, red nation, to do so. That's called the Rights of Nature Statute. Because we recognize that we are not separate from. And within this statute, we have decided that we will take those corporations to court that continue to defile our mother. And when we take them to court, we're taking the heads of the corporation, not the workers. We're not taking them to federal court. We're not taking them to state court. We're taking them to our court, the Ponca court. That's your opportunity as well. You vote. Your people make your laws. What will you expect of them? What do you demand of them? What rights do you have to separate yourself from those very things that give you life? What rights do you give them over you to make a decision on your behalf based on greed, based on ugliness. I kind of wonder, do they even care about their own children? Do they honestly believe that if they buy my relative's air down in the Amazon and they pollute the Ponca people because we live by the ConocoPhillips refinery, do they not think that same air is going to travel over their children eventually? The wind blows. Is this that hard? The water flows, right? The thunders move on their own. And where they arrive, that's where we get our blessing. Unless they're moving over nuclear waste, unless they're moving through pollution that you and I are encouraging by not stopping it. Yeah. So when we talk about indigenous values, indigenous rights, there are ways that we can protect each other. In Oklahoma, we have 39 tribes there, 36 of us from Trails of Tears. Our tribe was reduced to under 500 at that time. My grandpa was eight years old when he walked 650 miles with his parents. And one in three of us died after that. But yet, because we are all one, we pass this rights of nature statute that will protect the rancher farmers around us, that will protect those that are the polluters themselves 
because that's how we have to do this. If you uphold our rights through the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, through the treaty rights that are the supreme law of the Constitution of the United States of America, through the human rights that are set in stone. And always remember, humans are not separate from nature. If we have any sense at all, we'll begin to understand that there is a natural law that has been in place from time immemorial. And we'll begin to understand that to live within those natural laws is the only way to go forward. We cannot allow our politicians to say otherwise because that's only a false solution. It has no reality based in what is going to happen in the future. When I left home, two days before I left home, we'd been in a drought for six years and we ended up getting a four and a half inch rain in 45 minutes. That's climate chaos. We have relatives that come up from the south, those animals that are seeking asylum in a cooler area that have never lived there before. We have birds migrating. We have relatives that have, are the wings that have no longer lived there. We have frogs that we don't see anymore. We notice all of these things from the time of the mid-70s when our medicine men were telling us it's the beginning of the purification. So we have to understand that Earth herself will survive as she has. Do we want to be part of that? Do we want the seventh generation beyond us to breathe? to eat, and to drink. Those are our choices. So it's not an indigenous cosmology, it's your cosmology as well. Your people, at one time, lived next to our mother, the earth. Grew your food, fished the streams, hunted, and enjoyed the life that the Creator and Mother Earth had given you. And as we move away and we closet ourselves into rooms, into air conditioning, and mind you, I'm kind of a creature of comfort myself. I enjoy those things. But there's ways for those to happen. If the sun shines, why not use solar energy? If the wind blows, let's try the wind energy, but be careful of that. I found out when they approached our tribe about wind energy that it was a carbon credit scheme, that they were going to sell that energy to OG&E, which was a coal fire generating plant that is right down the road from my family, and that that coal dust that's still blowing on the tribe next to us was, was causing autism and deaths. In my tribe, Six to eight hundred of us live locally. We've averaged a funeral a year, I mean a week, from cancers, from autoimmune diseases, from cardiovascular issues because of the extractive industry. Oklahoma has become the earthquake nexus of the world because of the injection wells from the fracking, where they use eight million gallons of good fresh water and pollute it and then stick it back into the earth and expect her to put it up with it. But she does not. We have had a 5.8 earthquake there as a result of the injection wells, man-made earthquakes. Your governor loves fracking here. I was so disturbed and so sad over at Bonn, Germany, because we had some uh, young chanters there from the indigenous rising people who were saying, uh, keep, the, keep the oil in the soil, keep it in the ground. And Governor Brown said, I want to put you in the ground. Well, that's an honor too. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to being recycled myself, but... That is not his choice. And it's a good thing that this grandma wasn't there. 
<laughs> I got I got big sons back here. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma Power. <laughs> so it's been an honor. I'm, I don't have a lot else to say to you. I think you get it, right? Yeah. I think that we all understand we're in this together. I think it's important for you to know, as well as me, that we have choices. But our time for enacting those choices was about 10 years ago. Seriously. And so now we have 10 minutes. Maybe we have 10 days together. But there has been a tide of humanity that has changed the course of history, starting here in Berkeley some years back. That anti-war movement. There's been a tide of people who have said, me too. There's been a tide of students who said in Kent State, I'm going to stand for what's correct. There's been a tide of humanity that is more than the tide of deniers, more than the tide of the white supremacist, more than the tide of those idiots that live in Washington, D.C. and call themselves leaders. We're the leaders. All power is assumed power. Assume your power now. Align yourself with the true power of the Mother Earth, the true power of the Father Son, the true power of the sacred water, the true power of the Father Sky. The true power of the moon mother who governs your rhythms. The true power of the star nation. Let's win this one. Ando com o Tinko Spa, a Grazi Sequim. Ando com o Jushibu Xarabu, a Grazi Sequim. Ando com o Xinan Pupá, a Grazi Sequim. A Runi Xarabu, a Grazi Sequim. A Imbu Xarabu, a Grazi Sequim. Ando com o Ndi, a Grazi Sequim. Nem agradecer quem, um pacha agradecer quem, no com mãe agradecer quem. Já capim, capim, já capim, capim. Hai <laughs> Hai <laughs> Ira, 
hai ra 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 hai 
que nós temos com a nossa mãe natureza. I want to share with you a bit about indigenous people's relationship or rapport with the earth, with nature, with mother earth. And of course, this is a spiritual rapport that I am to speak of. Na tradição do meu povo, nós vivemos milhões de anos nessa relação com a nossa natureza, com a terra, com a água, com a floresta, com os animais. E nós não, não temos uma divisão entre viver a, a vida da natureza e a natureza viver a gente, porque nós não vemos um ser fora a parte. Nós acreditamos e nós vivenciamos isso na realidade. Nós somos a parte da natureza e a natureza é uma parte de nós. In the Hunikui tradition, which we have lived and practiced for millions of years, we are one with nature and the animals and the earth. There is no division between nature and people or people and nature. We believe that we are part of Mother Earth, not separate from her. In nossas tradições, os nossos nomes, por exemplo, nós recebemos nomes de animais, nós recebemos nomes de planta, nós recebemos nomes de astros, e isso nos comprova na nossa tradição que nós não somos parte da natureza. Não existe o povo Runicun e a floresta. Existe o povo Runicun junto com a floresta, a floresta junto com o povo Runicun. E eu acredito que todos os povos indígenas fazem essa relação com a nossa mãe natureza. So, even the names that we use uh, and that our traditional knowledge gives us of the plants and the stars uh, reaffirms this unity between the people and the earth. You can't talk about the Hunikui people here and the Amazon over here. We're one. And I believe that that unity of people and Mother Earth is characteristic of all indigenous peoples all over the world. Todos nós sabemos que 100% de nossas vidas nós dependemos da natureza para sobreviver. Ou tem alguém aqui que não precisa da natureza para viver? <laughs> we know, as Hunikui, that we are 100% dependent on nature to live. Existe... Are any of you uh, able to live without nature? Tem alguém aqui dentro que se alimentou hoje? Todo mundo comeram? So, did everybody have something to eat today? Então nós estamos conscientes de onde saiu esse alimento. And are all of us conscious of the origin of that food? Esse alimento saiu da nossa mãe terra. Quantos aqui beberam água hoje? That food and I hope this isn't breaking news, came from Mother Earth. How many of you drank some water today? Todos nós sabemos que a água veio dos rios também, ligado com a nossa Mãe Terra. So, um, everybody knows that water comes from rivers, right? Quantos aqui conseguem ficar três minutos sem respirar? How many of you can hold your breath for three minutes? Consegue três minutos sem respirar? Really? <laughs> Ninguém consegue. I don't think anybody lasts three minutes without a little bit of air. Por que, que eu estou falando isso? Porque What? essa é a nossa relação com a nossa mãe natureza. Why am I talking about this? Well, because it has absolutely everything to do with our relationship with nature. Talvez na cidade 
vocês precisam pagar por isso é, para ter uma, uma água em casa, para ter, um, de repente, algum, algo assim. Mas para nós que vivemos essa relação com essa natureza, nós nunca precisamos, enquanto os povos indígenas, os povos originários. Quando eu era um pequeno boy, my brothers and my sisters and my cousins and I, we used to hang out with our elders around the fire and listen to them. And they would talk to us about the future of the earth and of other matters of great importance. Around that fire, I was prepared to become a warrior. E isso é o que vocês podem chamar de cosmovisão. Os nossos avós sempre diziam para nós que haveria um, um período em que as pessoas iam se, iam se confundir entre si mesmo. E uma das coisas que é muito visível para nós é verdadeiramente o que é proteger a nossa terra, nossa mãe terra, a nossa mãe natureza. Isso está investindo e muitas informações que está confundindo a nossa mente. O que que verdadeiramente é proteger a nossa Mãe Terra e o que que é fazer da nossa Mãe Terra, da natureza, um negócio para sobreviver. So, these talks around the fire is where we learned what um, some of you all call our cosmovision. And our elders, around that fire, spoke of a time, and that time is now, when a lot of people are going to be very confused. There's going to be a lot of turmoil in their head. Their minds aren't going to be so clear. They're going to, and maybe already have, Forgotten that the most important thing for us to do is protect Mother Earth. That Mother Earth is not a business. Todos nós aqui. Todos nós temos um compromisso. Todos que estamos aqui dentro, todos que estamos lá fora. Nós precisamos ter uma posição, definir qual é a nossa relação hoje com a nossa natureza, qual é o compromisso em que nós temos para as nossas crianças, para os nossos filhos, para os nossos netos, para os nossos bisnetos. No meu território, aonde vive o meu povo e demais povos, na Amazônia, nós fomos povos muito felizes tempos atrás. Mas hoje nós vivemos um momento de tormentos, um momento de pressão, um momento de cobrança, momentos de ameaças, porque se transformou em pessoas que tinham bons corações em tempos antigos, elas se transformaram em autoridades que os mais velhos chamam de autoridade máquinas. Autoridade máquinas são aquelas pessoas que só querem hoje trabalhar com a máquina através da tecnologia, que tem muito para ajudar, mas tem muitas coisas que a tecnologia não consegue nos ajudar. Por exemplo, a retirada de muitas madeiras na, na região amazônica em nome de um progresso, em nome de um desenvolvimento, que esse desenvolvimento tem causado grandes problemas, como enfermidades, como corrupção, como cooptação de pessoas, que às vezes elas acabam enfrentando a sua própria família por conta da ganância do capital. O capital foi um um mal para a humanidade. Nós temos essa, esse entendimento. Porque quando o grande espírito criou esse nosso universo, 
Ele criou tudo para todos. Ele criou o ar para todos nós. Criou a água para que todos nós usufruíssemos. O território para que todos nós sobrevivêssemos dentro. Mas hoje muitos governantes e muitos aliados, muitas grandes empresas estão pensando muito só no lucro das empresas. E para poder pensar no lucro das empresas, eles estão pensando em continuar destruindo a nossa natureza. E hoje, quando a gente fala das mudanças climáticas, não é a mudança do clima, porque a natureza não se destrói sozinha, mas é a mudança dos pensamentos do ser humano. É a mudança do amor no coração das pessoas que está esfriando. Por isso que muitos países estão em guerra. Porque as pessoas deixaram de pensar com o seu coração e estão pensando na ganância do capitalismo com a moeda, com os seus bancos, com as suas multinacionais. Muitos rios no Brasil estão tá sendo destruídos para criar barragem de hidrelétricas. No meu estado, por exemplo, se implantou um capital verde, um capitalismo verde, porque as pessoas pensam que compra tudo hoje com o dinheiro. Estão implantando um projeto, que é o projeto do crédito de carbono, do RED. Estão enganando as pessoas, dizendo que o projeto de RED vai resolver o problema das mudanças climáticas, do efeito estufa no nosso planeta, não é verdade. So we all have a commitment here, and we have a commitment there, and we have a commitment everywhere. And we better be really clear about what our relationship is with Mother Earth if we are going to fulfill that commitment. And that commitment isn't really for us at all. It's for our children and our grandchildren and our great, 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 great grandchildren. In my territory, in the Amazon, indigenous peoples historically have lived happily, but now there is great storms and tensions and death threats rain upon me and other leaders. Our, our people are getting bought off by the government. People's heads are getting twisted. We've seen that the timber companies came along and they said, oh yeah, we're going to cut down the forest and that's going to bring development and wealth. Well, it brought sickness and corruption and co-optation and divided families and worst of all, it brought the evil of greed. Money is evil. It is the worst evil there is for humanity. When the great creator created the universe, the creator created the universe for all of us, gifted us water for all, land for all. But governments and multinational corporations and, dare I say, governors are just interested in profit for themselves. And the only way to turn a profit is to destroy nature. Today we are told that there's climate change. It's not climate change. It's not a change of the climate. The climate isn't changing of its own accord. Nature doesn't destroy herself. The change is caused not by the climate, it's caused by us. It's caused by war and greed and evil. We're in this pickle 
because people are not thinking with their hearts. Just thinking about money. Now the rivers of the Amazon are being dammed. And in my home, in the state of Acre, Brazil, they are trying to impose what they call green capitalism. Specifically, the state of California is imposing a project to generate carbon credits or permits to pollute. It would be so lovely if you could hold it down back there. Um, carbon credits, yes. They're selling uh, the air from the Amazon so polluters here in California can pollute more instead of cutting emissions at source. And that project is called RED, R-E-D-D. -D, and it is, we are told that it is the great solution to climate change, but it is absolutely not. E, como eu falei, cada um de nós aqui, temos um compromisso. Um compromisso de cuidar da nossa mãe natureza. Porque se nós dependemos dela para sobreviver, nós temos que ter o maior cuidado. Às vezes as pessoas é, falam que nós, às vezes, somos um, um empecilho ou atrapalhamos o desenvolvimento dos governos. Nós não somos contra o desenvolvimento, mas nós somos contra a forma em que destrói a nossa natureza só por ganância. E de fazer um convite a cada um de vocês que estão aqui, de se juntar, se juntar com cada um que está do seu lado e conosco para defender verdadeiramente um futuro da nossa Mãe Natureza. Quando nós defendemos a floresta em pé, nós não estamos falando só pela nossa comunidade ou pelo nosso povo. Nós estamos lutando pela defesa da nossa humanidade. Segundo os estudos, dizem que a região amazônica é o pulmão do mundo. É responsável pela respiração que o planeta Terra respira. E nós acreditamos que é verdade. Mas se, da maneira em que esse nome de desenvolvimento se evolui e destruir os povos indígenas dos seus territórios, a natureza vai ser destruída. E sem a floresta, sem a água, não vai existir um ser humano nesse planeta que vai sobreviver. Por isso que, mais uma vez, dizer, fazer esse convite para vocês. E essa é uma das missões em que o meu povo me deu, de ir em todo o canto do planeta, em todos os continentes, dizer que a nossa Mãe Terra, ela está precisando de nós. Ela está precisando do nosso apoio. E nós temos que despertar para nós garantir que os nossos filhos, os nossos netos, os nossos bisnetos, pelo menos vejam o que nós estamos vivendo agora. E eu queria dizer um pouco essa mensagem. Em nome do nosso planeta, em nome dos nossos espíritos que clamam por isso, por isso. fiquei muito triste hoje de poder ir em um lugar sagrado, onde as pessoas colocaram cimento por cima, colocaram pedras em cima de muitos sentimentos que estão ali. Mas a nossa mãe natureza também, ela tem cobrado. Há muitos cantos, tem muitas inundações, em outros cantos tem muitas secas, em outros cantos tem as tempestades, é um, um aviso e um chamado da nossa Mãe Natureza para nós se reunir. E deixando essa mensagem, quero agradecer a todos por nos dar essa oportunidade de falar esse sentimento que nós temos. Se um dia vocês tiverem a oportunidade de ir na minha aldeia, 
Vocês vão ver que nós não estamos falando aqui somente por falar, mas é uma realidade que o meu povo vive e que os povos indígenas do planeta inteiro vivem. Muito obrigado. Se tem alguma curiosidade, alguma pergunta, estamos à disposição. Aos Raus. Aos Raus. So, as I was saying, we all have a commitment, and don't be fooled by the false development trap. Of course, indigenous peoples are regularly accused of being against development, but we're not against development, we're just trying to make sure there's a world to live in. So I invite you to come together. In fact, you could start right now and turn next to the person that's sitting at your side and get to know each other and come together. Come together to defend Mother Earth. When we defend the Amazon back home, we're not just defending the Amazon for us. We're defending the Amazon for all of humanity. Of course, you've heard that the Amazon is the lungs of the world. Mother Earth breathes. You can't destroy nature and destroy indigenous peoples and think that you're going to be able to keep keeping on. Without the Amazon, without water, human beings aren't going to survive. So I invite you, in fact, I more than invite you, I must invite you, because that is the mandate that the Hunikui people have given me to travel the world and invite you to defend Mother Earth. Because Mother Earth needs us right now. Mother Earth is calling and we need to wake up. So that the children and the children of the children and the children of the children of the children of the world have a world to live in. My message is a message on behalf of the planet, on behalf of the spirits. This morning I was, I was sad. I was over at the shell mound in a parking lot. And I felt the ancestors underneath that asphalt. Nature is not just going to let us destroy her. That's why there's floods and droughts and severe weather and that everything that's happening is happening. So that's my message and thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you a bit of what I carry in my heart. If you were to go to my village, you would see that what I am speaking of What I'm telling you about the Amazon and indigenous peoples is true. So thank you, and I'd be delighted to answer a few questions. telling us we don't have time for questions now, but I made a, a really bad mistake a little bit earlier and I wanted to uh, correct myself. The first thing I should have done in our way of protocol is to say thank you to the Ohlone people for allowing all of us on their territory and to also say thank you to their ancestors for bringing us forward and giving us voice. Weep the ha, shan. <laughs>